we will go with who got second place in the division uh, last year, and that would be the Indianapolis Colts. Went 11-5. and five. Their needs, uh, per all these different sites, per all these people that, that would know, offensive tackle, wide receiver, tight end, and cornerback. Uh, we will roll through right quick the list. Round one, they got Quiddy Pay, edge rusher out of Michigan. Round two, they got edge rusher Deo Adeyingbo out of Vanderbilt. They got tight end Kylan Grayson, or Granson, excuse me, out of SMU in the fourth round. Sean Davis out of Florida uh, in the fifth round. Sam Ellinger, quarterback out of Texas in the sixth round. Michael Strachan out of Indianapolis, which is strange, in the seventh round. And then Will Freeze uh, out of Penn State in the seventh round. So um, we'll, we'll stick with, you know, the, the day one and two and just kind of get an idea. Two edge rushers in the first two rounds and then no yeah. third round pick. It, this seemed rather strange to me um, when you have so many other needs. Um, obviously, you, you always need help, you know, with edge rush, and, and I get that. Pay is great. Uh, Deo Adeyingbo out of Vanderbilt is actually a pretty good uh, a pass rusher, but at, you had so many other needs, it seemed odd to go with this strategy. Did, did you guys feel the same? 100%. 100%. And I th- look, they just addressed the offensive line need today. They just signed Eric Fisher to a one-year deal, what, about an hour ago. So that's a yeah. big signing for the Colts because they needed a left tackle with Anthony Costanzo retiring. Obviously, we know what happens to Carson Wentz when he's under pressure. He doesn't perform all that well. Most quarterbacks don't, but he really doesn't perform well when he's under pressure. And that poor kid's been running for his life for the last three years. But it is interesting. Two defensive ends right away. When I look at the Colts, they needed help in that secondary. I know Xavier Rhodes sort of played better last year than he did the year before in Minnesota, but they still need help in that defensive backfield. And look, we just talked about it. Helping your pass rush will certainly help your defensive backs. They uh, they needed help at linebacker, in my opinion. They need another wide receiver, in my opinion, here. Give Carson Wentz some weapons here. So I thought the draft was a little strange. I thought it was a little heavy on the defensive line. I don't necessarily think that was their biggest weakness last year. I mean, they brought in DeForest Buckner from the 49ers. That defense for the first half of the year was a top five defense. Yes. Then they just fell apart, didn't have enough depth. So, I mean, I guess for me, the Colts, I think, were a little bit better than the Titans. I don't know a lot about this Kalen Granson kid. From what I see everywhere else, it seemed like it was a reach and not not everyone was over, overall happy with that pick. And then, of course, Sam Ellinger, that poor kid, uh, you know, obviously going through a lot of stuff right now, which is really, really sad. Uh, I think it's okay. Quiddy Pay was probably, what, the second or third best pass rusher in the draft outside of the kid out of Miami, if if I have my analysis right there. Uh, So I think it's all right. They helped out their defense a little bit. I'm more meh. On the Colts, eh, it's 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 okay. Uh, nothing really splash. I would have liked to see them do more to help Carson Wentz, uh, but uh, defensively, I guess it'll be okay. Chris, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not a fan. Um, I, I like Quiddy Pay. I think I think they got a good first round pick, and and then the rest of this, I you know, I don't really yeah. understand. This is a team that I did think needed a quarterback. This was a place where I thought would have been a good landing spot for a Kellen Mond um, or, or somebody that I think is capable and can play in the NFL. Uh, Gary equates Sam Ellinger to Tim Tebow, 100%. which is his just his throwing style is just not not set up to be successful in the NFL. And I do not believe Carson Wentz is a good football quarterback. I just don't think he's good at football. I think the one year of magic that he had, he got hurt and Nick Foles had that same magic. I can't explain all that goes into that, but I know that I've seen a huge plate of Nick Foles. He's not good at football. I can't take (laughs) six months of what I saw and think that's his life. That's six months of magic and I can't explain it, but I saw six months of Carson Wentz do that, and and that's not real either. Okay, everything right. else is smoke and mirrors, and he's not very good. He's not accurate. He does he holds onto the football, and he doesn't have good decision making ability. Also, the first time in his life he ever faces real adversity in the locker room where somebody else takes his starting job, he whines and pouts and quits. Yeah, I don't want yeah. that guy on my team at all. So to get his backup as Sam Ellinger, that's. That's a that's a tough road to hoe. Well, don't forget uh, they got Jacob Eason from last year. You know, Jacoby <laughs> Brissett still there, I think. Yeah, Jacoby. no, Brissett's down in uh, uh, Miami. Miami now. Yeah. Oh, he left for Miami. He's back in the awesome Jacoby though. became a free agent, and, and he, there you go. See, I'm he's too, many, too many, too oh, many yeah, no. free agents. But uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm just I'm real down on this team, and and I now here's what's weird. I this is how I'm thinking about these draft picks and what I think this team should do. Now let's take effect that 
everything this organization has done under this new regime, Frank Wright and the front office there, has been unbelievable. So yeah. the chances of me being wrong and them being right are far better. But what I know of these college players and what I know of what I've seen with the Colts and the players they brought in, I just don't know what they're doing. I thought they were really close to being a great team. And the biggest anchor that they did was they put Carson Wentz on their football team. And that's, you know, hold the whole boat. I'm willing to tell, I'm I'm willing to give a, I like it grade to teams when I can understand their strategy. There's no strategy here. Like there's, it's just, Hey, these players were available and we just took them because maybe they felt like they didn't have any holes, but like they need weapons. They need guys to be able to protect uh, Carson Wentz. They, you know, we, we've seen it like Chris, you know what we're talking about. He, he's, Really bad when he has no protection. Um, He's not good. Yeah. But I also but think it's it could just with be protection. I he, will say though, he tries hard. That kid will. That he will <laughs> sacrifice his body. He'll I'm die. So sorry, Carl. He, he's a starting NFL quarterback. If you're I not know, trying, if you're not trying, <laughs> that, that can't be the baseline for you get to play. Is That's the only good thing the I can most. say. That I don't just know. Can't be it. Is is you want to do really good? Yeah. That no, just you're can't. completely right. You are Wentz, completely right, and you're way. right about Nick Foles, too. I always take a good opportunity to bag on Nick Foles. Nick Foles is absolute garbage at the quarterback position. He always has been. He always will be. I know he had that one year with the Rams. I, can't, went through. I oh. can't explain it. I can't explain Here, what I, I will explain this with Chris. that team I, and the Eagles. I really I can can't. explain it. Yeah. I can explain it. Here's It was the second season for him, and that was before everybody really got a good feel because he was no, still because developing. Nick Foles did the exact same thing, and we had years of film on him. There was something unique about that Philly football team. That There's yeah. something just strange. You know how I feel about Fletcher Cox. Like I think the, they had the perfect combination of leadership. They didn't have yes. great skill players, but everybody that wasn't a skill player was an amazing football player. Well, you remember they, that they, they were one of the most run. talented teams in the league, and they just carried those guys, just like the Bucks carried Brad Johnson years ago, just like the Ravens carry Trent Dilfer. Shitty quarterbacks win Super Bowls sometimes. The the yep. Super Bowl win was uh, an anomaly. It was crazy. Five hundred yards of offense for both you know teams, both quarterbacks, whatever. It was it was yeah. nuts because the defense got them to the championship game. Like Nick Foles was not good yeah. until the Super Bowl. Like it was, it was strange. And then defense disappeared for both teams. You got it. Exactly. We we are getting off of the Colts here. Uh, Are are, are all three of us saying we don't like it or it's just, I think so. It's meh. I mean, I would lean. Don't like I'm leaning. Don't like it's meh, but this is an organization I trust. So it's a weird feeling. So, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I I do trust Chris Ballard in, in what he has done there, but, uh, but this one was, I'm not used to this from their drafts. Typically I like what they do, but Either way, we will move on, and we are moving. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.